Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to present you an opening trap for black in the Petrov's defense. The trap is known as the Marshall Trap and is named after Frank James Marshall, one of the world's strongest chess players in the early part of the 20th century and US champion from 99 to 1936. You can see the critical position already in the board. It's black to move and win right at the spot. But take your time. Before we just jump right into the tactic, I of course want to show you how to reach the position and what white should have done to avoid to get trapped. So without further ado, it's time to checkmate. <laughs> So the game that we are following is a game between Janowski and Marshall and took place in 1912. The game started with the moves e4, e5, knight f3 and here black played the move knight f6. This is known as the starting position of the Petrov's defense and white just simply captured the pawn on e5. This is known as the classical variation. Um, now both players played some logical developing moves that are pretty well known in theory. Black played d6 attacking the knight, the knight moves away to f3. Um, Black captures the pawn on e4, White just simply played the move d4, gaining some space in the center and making room for the dark squared bishop. Um, Black plays the move uh, d5, White develops the bishop to d3, Black develops the bishop to d6, both sides castles, and here White played the move c4. And nowadays the main move would have been c6. This was, for example, played by one of the strongest players in the world, Fabio Caruana, in many, many games. So if you want to know more about this variation, I would really advise you to check out his games. In the game, black played the move bishop to g4, and this is more like an old line, you know. Um, here, white just simply captured the pawn on d5, and here black played the move f5, because the knight on e4 was hanging, you know. And now comes a mistake. White plays the move rook to e1. And this move gives black the opportunity to play a little nice tactic. But before I will show you the tactic, I of course want to show you what uh, would have been a better move for white. A better move for white in this position would, for example, be knight to c3, attacking the knight on e4 a second time. And here black should have played knight to d7, and after h3, kicking the bishop away, bishop h5, knight takes e4, f takes e4, bishop takes e4, knight f6, attacking the bishop, and bishop f5, and king to h8. We reach a position where I believe that white must be slightly better. Right, mo right at the moment, white is up to pawns, but of course, um, one pawn will fall sooner or later. I mean, black could already take the d5 pawn in the next move, and black got some pressure along the d file against the isolated double pawns by white but i still think that with best play this must be a better position for white and this is probably why this line isn't common these days but instead black most likely plays the move c6 instead of bishop to g4 um, funny enough this position was reached by frank james marshall himself at least six times in over the board games and believe it or not but with the black pieces, he scored three wins and three draws. So, well, somehow he managed to um, gain the best out of the position, right? But um, that's probably because he was a pretty, pretty strong player and his opponents just simply wasn't on his level, you know? Anyway, if you want to know more about this position, I would advise you just to check out his games. They are quite entertaining. Let's go back to our game. In our game, White decided to play the move rook to e1 and in this position black got a nice little tactic and i mean it's not a clear advantage but i think i still would advise you to pause the video and try to figure out what black's best move could be in this position i'll give you three seconds to pause the video one two three well, I hope you have found the solution. If not, I'll give you a little hint. Black's pieces are already pretty good lined up for an attack against White's king. You know, the rook could probably swing over, the queen could come in, 
the bishop is uh, pinning the, uh, the knight because of the queen. This bishop is threatening on h2. This, bishop, uh, this knight is threatening on f2. So there probably is a sacrifice that could be worth thinking of. I give you another three seconds to pause the video if you need to with this end in mind. One, two, three. Well, I hope you have found the solution. The right move is bishop takes h2 check exclam. It's not a clearly winning move, that's why I think it's probably hard to find for you, but it's definitely a move that gives black a better position. And why is this move so good? Well, let's start with a move like knight takes h2. Well, then we just simply grab the queen on d1 and game over. If white, for example, would play a move like king to h1, well, then we just simply grab the pawn on f2 with our knight saying check and winning the queen. So those moves are impossible. So what's left? Well, it's left to take the bishop or to go to f1. And in the game, white took the bishop on h2. And what will happen in this variation, I will show you soon enough. But I think that the move um, king to f1 really deserves some attention because it's probably not that bad. Um, but if black plays precise, I guess he uh, will remain with an advantage because let's say Black plays the move queen to e8 with the idea of bringing the queen to h5. And here, for example, a really, really bad move would be g3 with the idea of um, catching the bishop on h2 with a move like king to g2. But this would be just simply losing after queen to h5 attacking the knight a second time. So, for example, rook to e3 to defend the knight. Then we just simply uh, sacrifice the bishop on g3. And after f takes g3, queen h3 check, king e1, queen takes g3 check, king e2, we have a little nice mate on f2 with the queen. So as you can see, white already needs to be pretty pretty precise and the better move in this position would have been knight to c3. But after queen h5, knight takes e4, f takes e4, rook takes e4. Um, don't make the mistake and take with the bishop because after knight to d7, it's already pretty, pretty tough for white to find good moves, you know. For example, bishop d2 runs into bishop d6 and queen b3, rook a to e8. And this is already horrible for white. We are threatening queen to h1 check and if the king moves out, well, then the um, bishop on e4 is on priest. So this is already a tough position that is clearly better for black. Um, instead, white captured with the rook. And after bishop takes f3, g takes f3, and knight to d7, we reach a position where I think that black must be better. Because white got some really problems with his pawn structure, you know. He got two isolated double pawns, and even if black is right now down in material, I mean, he's only down one pawn, okay? White got a bishop pair, but let's face it, this position must be better for black. Um, he can take the pawn on d5 at any time, for example. His next moves will uh, most likely be bishop to d6, knight to b6, attacking the d4 pawn, and then he will bring his rook to the e file or to the d file, or he just simply plays a move like rook to f6 and doubles the rooks on the f file. So I think the black guards a pretty decent game, and it's only black who can be better in this position. Anyway, let's go back to our game. In our game, white decided to grab the bishop with the king. And here black took the pawn on f2, attacking the queen on d1, and the queen moved to e2. And here white played the move knight takes d3. And here white played the move queen takes d3, and this is actually another mistake. And I would advise you to pause the video and try to figure out what's white's best move in this position. I'll give you three seconds to pause the video if you need to. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. If not, I'll give you a little hint. Our queen could come over to the king's side, attacking king and rook at the same time, but for now it doesn't work because of the knight on f3. So with this hint in mind, I'll give you another three seconds to pause the video if you need to. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. The right move is bishop takes f3. And if the queen takes the bishop, then we just simply have the nice check. Queen to h4 check, attacking king and rook at the same time. So let's say queen to h3, then we just simply capture the rook and after bishop e2 and queen to f2, well, we'll just simply up an exchange. We got a rook, white got a bishop, 
And on top, white still got um, pretty bad pawns on the D file. So yeah, this position is already clearly winning for black. I just have to mention that in this position, it would have been probably a better move for white to simply step aside with the king. And after bishop takes d5 and knight to c3 and knight to c6, we reach a position where black's still up to pawns and he's still better. But I guess this is a little bit more playable than this line I just showed you earlier. And I really have to show you one last line because after black took the bishop on d3, white isn't forced to take the knight on d3. He could have played the move queen to e6 check and this was actually played in the game I, uh, we are following. And here black has to move his king to h8 and after bishop g5 attacking the queen, queen d6 check and the trade of queens, white can play the move like rook to e7. And here in the game, black played a move f4, and I don't think that this is a bad move, but I think it's probably better for black to play the move h6, because after bishop d2, b6, and knight to e1, knight takes e1, bishop takes e1, knight to a6, and knight to a3, white wants to play moves like knight to c4 or knight to b4. That's why he's not developing to um, c3, because then he wouldn't have the option to go to c4, you know. And rook f to e8, the trade of rooks, and knight to b5 and rook to e2. We reach a position where I believe that black must be slightly better. I mean, don't make the mistake, don't learn all these lines. Um, they're just um, too much in detail, and if you think about it, this position was never reached in a practical game. I just want to show you some uh, more moves for your general chess understanding, you know. Because um, you may argue, well, I'm a little bit scared that white could take this pawn, and well, if the d-pawns run, then, uh, you know, you could see some problems in this position. And that's why I just wanted to show you some more moves so that you get a feeling for the position. It's uh, not about learning these moves, it's just for your general understanding of chess. Uh, right now, white really cannot take the pawn on d6, because then we just simply have to move bishop to f3. And white cannot take the bishop because um, it is pinned. So let's say he takes the pawn on f5. Um, well, then we just simply um, take the pawn on d5, and now we're still threatening to take the pawn on b2 and the pawn on uh, g2. So let's say white defends it with a move like um, bishop to g c3. Well, then we just simply grab the pawn, and after king h3 and rook to e2, I think it's clear that only black can play for the win because he's up a pawn. And his bishop is pretty bad. Um, he could replace it with a pawn, it wouldn't make any difference. And yeah, I think this position is just better for black, being up a pawn, only he can play for the win. So if you don't take the pawn, well, a better move for white would be, for example, king to g1, stepping aside, and here we just simply play king to g8. And also already told you, please don't learn this line this far, it's just for general stress understanding. You saw the trap, if this is all what you wanted to know, then it's okay if you turn off the video, but for a general understanding, I will just show you some more moves, you know. And let's say now um, white would take the pawn. Well, that's again no problem for us because we have knight to c7. And if we gain the pawn on d5, well, then we're just simply um, better. So this is okay for black as well. So a better move for white would be rook to c1. Because if white takes now the pawn on um, d6, then we cannot play knight to c7. So we play the move. Rook takes b2, and after knight takes d6, we have to move knight to b4, attacking again the pawn on d4, and after the trade of the minor pieces and the check on c8, we have to move our king to h7. And here, good move for white would probably be rook to c7. And as you can see, black still up a pawn, and the computer thinks it's better, I think it's better, but you know, you could argue, well, this looks scaled for me, and that's why I'm showing you some more moves, you know. Um, rook takes d4, rook knight e8, um, attacking the pawn on g7, so h5 is a good move. After rook takes g7, check king h6, rook takes a7, and rook takes d5, rook b7, and rook b5. Um, I think we can finally stop, because Black managed to get rid of the um, scary pawns on the d file and still is up a pawn. So, I mean, I'm not saying that this is a clearly win position for black, but 
Um, of course, if any side can win this position, then it's black because he's up a pawn. So yeah, I hope you liked today's video. I hope you learned something. If you did, please let me know in the comments and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. So see you next time and it's again time to checkmate.